Are you ready? We're going to tame the beast today. The silicon carbide beast. But how exactly are we going to tame this beast? Duct tape? Bailing wire? Some well-timed slow jazz? Nope, none of the above. With some augmented switching technology, that's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Wide band gap materials such as silicon carbide are revolutionizing the power industry. But along with this revolution come some not-so-great byproducts, like overheating, short circuits, and overvoltage. So the question remains, how can we use silicon carbide without those headache-inducing side effects? In this episode of Chalk Talk, Rob Weber from Microchip and I are taking a closer look at how Microchip's patented augmented switching technology can make those silicon carbide side effects a thing of the past, while reducing our switching losses up to 50% and accelerating our time to market as well. All right, silicon carbide beast, prepare to be tamed. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, Rob. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Excellent. So we're talking about silicon carbide and Microchip's family of agile switch digital gate drivers today. But Rob, before we get started, can you give me a bit of a refresher on silicon carbide devices and drivers? Certainly. So silicon carbide is a relatively new material. It's part of a family of materials that are referred to as wide band gap materials. Silicon carbide and GAN being the two primary materials in that category. And the principles and properties of wide band gap are that they enable devices for power switching to operate at much higher switching frequencies at much higher temperatures and at much higher voltages. There are differences between what silicon carbide and GAN do, but they're both in the process of actually replacing standard silicon and standard silicon IGBTs, or insulated gate bipolar transistors, as the current technology used. And the benefit, ultimately, of all of this is higher efficiency, higher reliability in power electronics, which basically power our cars, which give us the ability to have renewable energy from sun and wind, and other advanced opportunities in both power generation and energy and power use. Now, historically, these devices were driven in a very sort of analog way. The switching was very slow, but with wide band gap, and today we'll talk about silicon carbide, the switching requirements have increased quite significantly because it can operate and switch faster, and the devices need to be protected differently as well. So we're going to talk about the driving and the protection and the control of the silicon carbide switch today. So what this all means is, is that while analog drivers were all right for silicon switches, for the IGBTs, they operated much more slowly, they switched more slowly, it, it just worked fine. But silicon carbide is a completely different animal. It operates so much faster. So what we do and what our Agile Switch family of drivers do is tame the silicon carbide beast to unleash the full capability of silicon carbide. Fantastic. Now, Rob, how does this kind of solution compare with other similar technologies on the market today? So silicon carbide runs faster than silicon, but also as a result, there are some very uh, nasty side effects that emerge from this. You get higher DVDT, which can create more noise or EMI in the system. They're much more susceptible to short circuit. There's much higher overvoltage that occurs and also overheating. So typical solutions today, alternative driving solutions are analog. And what we've developed and we've determined is that digital solutions, primarily with a technology called augmented switching, is what's required to address these needs and to address these challenges. And that's really the primary difference than what is on the market as an alternative to the digital solutions that we're talking about here today. Okay, great. Now, Rob, can you explain this augmented switching technology a bit more? Certainly. And um, one of the other benefits of this augmented switching is the fact that it can also cut the time to market. 
because it's a digital approach and a software configurable approach, unlike analog solutions where you had to change out gate resistors, you end up burning up a lot of boards, with this digital solution, you're basically your PC becomes the equivalent of your soldering gun in replacing gate resistors. So that is a major differentiator and a major requirement of silicon carbide. Now, how does augmented switching accomplish these results I talked about before? It's a patented technology, and what it does is it allows for the ability to configure the turn on and the turn off of the switch, the voltage levels and the timing at those voltage levels in a very precise manner. So in a traditional switching environment, you're basically turning your switch on or turning it off. But with augmented switching, you're controlling it and the turn on and the turn off in very precise incremental steps. One way to think about it is like tapping the brakes of your car. It's almost like I'll call it a, a anti-lock braking system for controlling your switch. Now, we also have independent short circuit response. So in a typical environment when you're operating, you want to be very efficient and controlled. But in a short circuit, you want to shut down fast and safely. So that requires actually a different switching profile, and augmented switching allows for that. And then further, it has built-in robust fault monitoring and detection. And these are especially important in silicon carbide. So the net result is very reliable and efficient control of sick MOSFETs with up to 50% lower switching losses, 80% lower VDS overshoot, and robust and fast short circuit protection. So we're now talking about also the second generation of augmented switching technology. When you look at the top of the chart here, you see what a conventional analog driver does in terms of turning on and turning off the switch. We'll call this more of a hard switching environment where there's a one level turn on, one level turn off, and the slope of the turn on and the turn off are controlled specifically by gate resistors. It's an analog approach, it's not very precise, and also while great, as I mentioned, for IGBTs and silicon-based solutions, not very good for wideband gap and silicon carbide. In our first generation, we introduced one level turn off, and for short circuit operations, two level turn off for those conditions. But with our next generation, we've taken another leap forward to bring a level of control over turn on of the switch, an additional level for turn off, and yet one more level as well for turn off in a short circuit condition. So this allows for very precise control, very precise oversight of the uh, switching in the device. So can we take a closer look at how this kind of augmented switching actually works? We certainly can. So one of the things that we like to do, of course, is look at output scope shots. So what you can see in the screen are three different scenarios. At the top is our configuration tool. I'll go into that a little bit further in a moment. And at the bottom, below each example of the configuration tool setting, are the output waveforms. In the first set on the far left, you see your basic standard approach to switching. The turn on of the device is at 20 volts. The turn off is at minus 5 volts. And you can see the voltage ringing. You can see that going up to 752 volts. You can see the turn off energy. And you can see the swinging there in the red of the current as well. Now, in the middle, we looked at optimizing for efficiency. So we set the one level turn off there. We brought it down to zero volts as an intermediate step. We held it for 50 nanoseconds before bringing it down to minus five volts. What you can see here is we've actually reduced the ringing a little bit and also the ringing of the current, so the blue line and the red line, but really dramatically dropped the turnoff energy. Now, let's say that you can live with the little bit higher inefficiency turnoff energy, but you really want to control the voltage ringing even further. In that case, we tried another setting. So there we dropped to 4.5 volts. We held that for 650 nanoseconds before going to full turnoff at minus 5. So you can see we got a bump up in the energy loss, but we brought the ringing and the voltage overshoot down further, which could help, let's say, if EMI was a concern or a consideration. That makes sense. Now, Rob, you earlier mentioned intelligent configuration software. So can we get into the details of that a bit? Absolutely. Today, we're uh, talking about the next generation, not just of 
the switch itself and the augmented switching, but also of the tools to control augmented switching. And we call that our intelligent configuration tool. And what you can see on this screen are examples of the different settings that we can adjust. And this level, again, of precision is unprecedented. In the center, you'll see the different switching profile settings for both turn on, turn off under normal operations, as well as short circuit. The left side allows for different control settings for connecting to the PWM controller. And the right side is all about file management. Now, we're just showing you here one screen, but the other screens we have also show and allow for a visual representation. So I showed some of the visual representations on that previous slide. That's all controllable by dragging and dropping with your mouse as well. So you have both manual input as well as graphical and mouse-based input and control. So Rob, what microchip solution contains this augmented switching technology? So what we have developed is a proprietary ASIC. We call it the ASD2. And this proprietary ASIC, it's a mixed signal device, and it allows for all of the functionality that we've identified and we've implemented in the augmented switching gate drivers that we offer. It's a single channel gate driver. It allows for augmented switching for turn on, turn off, and short circuit. 28 volt range, which is adjustable. So silicon carbide devices have different optimal turn on and turn off settings. And the uh, ASD2 driver, as well as any of the gate driver boards that we use it on, allow for configurability of not just the steps within, but the turn on and turn off voltages. Very fast response time for DSAT or short circuit protection. We also can protect for under voltage and over voltage and set those as lockouts. We can sense temperature and high voltage, as well as both measure those results or report those results and set those as trip levels as well. We've got a gate miller clamp option. Blanking time is an important element also in any switching system. And ours is digital and configurable, as well as deglitch as well for trigger and DSAT and an operating temperature ranging from minus 40 degrees to uh, plus 105. So where you can see here on this slide is the generation two gate driver core that incorporates this ASD2 gate driver IC. And I won't repeat a lot of the features, the, there are a lot of the features that you saw before, but again, highlight in the green boxes you can see the programmable VGS, both the plus and minus on that. So what that does is that allows somebody who's working, let's say, with different silicon carbide MOSFET devices from microchip or from other manufacturers through software to adjust to the module or discrete device that they're driving, rather than, again, having to get a different gate driver and swap out boards and change boards. So it allows for that level of evaluation from vendor to vendor, and even within vendors, there's often differences. This new gate driver core is a half bridge device. It's designed for 1200 volt modules or up to 1200 volt modules, three watts per channel with a 10 amp peak current. So this gate driver core board can then be combined with adapter boards to create full plug and play solutions as well. Very cool. Now, Rob, if my audience would like to get started with ASDEC, do you guys have any development kits to help them on their way? Certainly, we do. And we've got two kits. We call one ASDAC, the other ASDAC Plus, and there are application development kits. Now, each kit comes with the intelligent configuration software. It comes with the programmer, and it, depending on the module type, the necessary hardware. Each kit also comes with at least one gate driver core board and an adapter board for the module. And that's in our typical ASDAC kits. The ASDAC Plus kits we also offer the module as well, and we have four different module types from microchip that we offer as part of that kit. So the ASDAC Plus kits allow you to test really any of the four microchip, what we call SP6LI modules, and the standard ASDAC kit cuts across any of the D3 or 62 millimeter packages offered by microchip, as well as alternative providers of these devices. Excellent. Well, this has been a bit to take in today, Rob. Can you recap your main points for me? Thank you. Yes, I certainly can. What you see here in the center of the screen is the gate driver core board, the half bridge device that incorporates our ASD2 gate driver IC and all that functionality. And the 
Gate Driver Core Board addresses markets like transportation, trains, trucks, trolleys, buses, heavy duty vehicles, the grid, as well as renewable energy, that whole infrastructure, as well as EV charging infrastructure. And the whole goal here really is to reduce switching losses up to 50%, accelerate time to market, and these products are ready for production and ready for customers to move straight into production. So what we see at the end of the day is we can get a customer into production up to six months faster than if they did it on their own. We offer higher performance and higher reliability. And at the end of the day as well, this results also in lower system costs for our customers. Fantastic. Well, Rob, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for having me. I appreciated uh, being here. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.